Hello, it's the Friday Talkie, again. Um, it's still not a regular thing, but I thought of something else to talk about. So here I am again, and wow, this chair is squeaking. Um, yeah, it's something I've sort of covered in the past before. It's not actually about gaming exactly, but it is about technology. A vision of the future. Um, because of something I read in the news, which sort of got me thinking... And it reminded me of the thing I'd talked about previously. And a whole load of things have all come together in my head and started jumbling around. And so I'm going to talk about them. Um, a thing that is obviously making the technology and gaming news at the moment is VR. Virtual reality. You, you've got your, um, your Oculus Rift and this other thing that I've forgotten the name of. And then PlayStation VR is, is becoming quite a thing because it's relatively affordable I guess it's the the least powerful of the three main things that are are around I don't expect to get one anytime soon I wish I could but I can't afford it but there is a, a level of acceptability creeping into the mainstream with regard to VR um, I mean I've, I've tried VR I had a go on an Oculus Rift several years ago and it was a very early one and it was interesting and kind of clunky I have played with VR on my phone. I've got a VR headset. I've got a homemade thing that uses my uh, Huddle tablet. I did a video on that. Anyway, my experience of it is limited. I like it. Um, it's fascinating, I think. Well, here's the thing. The VR stuff that people are, uh, are trying out at the moment, PlayStation VR and Oculus Rift and, and that other thing, they all have a limitation, and that is that they're tied down to a static console or computer, and you've got wires running to your headset. You, you can't walk around very far with that. And that's not necessarily a problem if you're doing, say, a, a racing game, you know, because you sit down in your car. So to be sitting in your chair, maybe with a wheel, with your VR headset on, great. Um, you'll get a level of realism there. It's when you've got to get up and walk about. That you, some of these things will allow you to walk around the room and they've got motion tracking and all of that, and, and that's pretty cool. Here's the thing. I think... Well, there are two things about this kind of VR that I find interesting. Um, or potential things that can happen. I think in the future there's going to be a need or someone will come up with a wearable VR system so that you can move around more, not be tethered to your computer by wires running to your headset because that I think that could be a problem. You could trip over, you could pull your computer over, you could just pull the headset off of your head if you, you run out of cable. Um, a wearable, reasonably powerful, more powerful than an Android thing, you know, have it clipped to your belt. I know some company or other, is it Alienware, have got like a rucksack kind of laptop that you wear and that's connected. I think that's a bit bulky. I think technology will move ahead a bit so that you can have something that's more the size of a an Android tablet. Wear that. Um, but the thing that interests me about it is not so much virtual reality. And I, this is a thing I've spoke about before. It is augmented reality. So you wear your headset, but you've also got two cameras, front-facing cameras, that will let you see the world as if you were seeing it through your own eyes, but it's projecting it onto your screen, and you're seeing it in full 3D as if it was with your own eyes. But this allows you to overlay information onto it, and if you've got GPS tracking and 4G connectivity and everything, where you, you could wear this all day, um, and the possibilities are mind-boggling. Uh, zoom, vision, you know, if you want to look at something, you don't need to get your binoculars out. If it's a long way away, you just give it a vocal command, and it will zoom in on that thing. And all of this in your normal vision. Um, there, are, there are questions that security 
uh, the, the 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 potential for your your thing being hacked remotely, the potential for security forces, agencies, whatever, MI five tracking you. I mean, Snoopers Charter and all of that lot. Governments would love this if everyone's online all the time with their VR headset because it makes life so much easier. Never mind um, needing to scan a barcode on a thing to find its price. You just look at it and the price will appear before your eyes. Um, th there, I, I can see an appeal. I can see this being mass market, so everyone's got one. Kind of like how today, to get by in the world, you, you need to be on the internet. I know you can still survive and get by day to day without the internet, and plenty of people do. Um, but... You can do so much more by being on the internet. Now, imagine that being the same, but with VR. You know, you, you will just... Life will be easier and, and more connected and offer more opportunities and options and whatever if you've got VR and you wear it all the time until it reaches a point where it's a legal requirement. Like, to live in this country you, you, and get by, you need a national insurance number. Well... I see a point in the future where to get by in this country, you need to be plugged in, wired up, you know, VR, wherever you go, and it makes you trackable. And that's kind of... you got good and bad there. Uh, and there will be those who will say, well, if you're not doing anything illegal, you've got nothing to worry about. And that's fine up to a point until you have... Um, Political opposition, if it's stifled, you know, you, you, you've got an opposition politician who the, the government decides, we don't like that person, where are they now? There they are, right, send someone out to get them, knock them off, whatever, you know, covertly, whatever. Uh, the possibilities are a bit mind-boggling and a bit frightening. The, this is, it's a vision I have, I, I try and, I'm, I always do it, but I don't always talk about it, I'm trying to see how's the world going to go? Um, and technology is such a big factor in that. Here's, here's the thing. The thing that prompted me to talk and do this Friday talkie was actually something I read, just a headline, which said, the government does not have a plan for robotization. Um, what they were talking about was things like driverless cars, but there are other things. Um... Now, you think about mm, pre-war farming. The harvest was brought in by hand. You would have farm labourers. They would go out, or, or the local village kids, or whatever, potato picking. You had people went out and brought in the harvest. Ploughing was done by a person with a horse. You know, the, the whole advent of tractors being used on farmland. It's not that long ago. But, you know, if... Manual labor was done by people. So, factory work, warehouse work, anything that required manual labor, it was people. Um, and things are moving away from that. They're becoming mechanized. But more than that, they're becoming robotized. And it worries me. Um, now, you think about uh, how long ago was it? The weavers were replaced by mechanical looms and you'd have them like Luddites as they were sabotaging, throwing their shoes into the looms and whatnot because it was putting them out of a job. And, you know, big business was able to make more money from mechanized looms than from actual people, skilled workers doing the job. And we are reaching that point now. We're coming to a point in history where manual labor is going to be made obsolete by robots. Never mind mechanized stuff like powered looms, but taxi drivers, warehouse workers. I used to work in a warehouse. The only reason I don't now is because I got a hernia and whatever. Um, one of the warehouses I used to work in shut down. The warehouse that replaced it also shut down because the warehouse that replaced, replaced that is robots. It's all 
it's not humanoid things walking around picking stuff up and blah but it is it's a mechanized robotized computerized system that will move stock around without the need for people to pick it up and move it and it doesn't make mistakes and it doesn't get a bad back and while there's initially a huge financial investment by the company to install this system, over a period of time, decade maybe, it works out cheaper and more financially effective, economical, whatever, than to pay humans. And so they do it. This kind of stuff gets brought in and humans who work in that field are out of a job. And it's a worry because there are there are people in this world who are bright enough to get by using their brains. They're, they're professional. They're they're like white collar workers. They're they're working in law or in banking or in education or medicine or something that takes their brains. They're paid for their for their intellect. But there are an awful lot of people in this world who are paid for their labour. They can't retrain. They can't get higher education. Maybe they d just don't have the opportunity through circumstances that may be no fault of their own. Or maybe they're just plain not bright enough. And that doesn't make them a bad person or someone to look down upon. But their their thing in life is manual labour. And that's that's... That's all they have any chance of doing. And when you replace that with technology, what are those people going to do? And this is the thing that the headline was talking about. Government has no plan for robotization. What, what are the people who are replaced by robots meant to do? And it's something I was pondering um, because I'm fascinated by the whole robotization thing. I, I, I think they're incredible things and the potential for them in certain situations. In some, it's scary. Um, armed, well, like, you've got your predator drones and things like that, but those the, the weapons are still fired by a human who's maybe a thousand or so miles away, but there's still a human there. But they're reaching the point with AI that these things can decide for themselves. Right, there's the target I'm going to fire. And they do it, and there will be consequences and how far that AI goes and and what if they decide all humans are the enemy and blah 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 terminator you know but now all of that side it, it, it's it's a thing to think about but it's the thing I'm more concerned with is the social side what about the people who've just been put out of a job and it seems to me that there are there are a couple of ways this could be looked at I think the capitalist view if I can get my word out capitalist, yeah, would be survival of the fittest. If you can't get by, if you can't get work, too bad. And people will, they'll be living in poverty or they may just die. I don't know. I mean, it depends how cruel will society or a government or, or whatever be and let these people just die. Um, that's that's the law of nature. But I kind of think, well, we're not animals anymore. And part of what sets us apart from animals is we look after each other. It's how humans came to survive by creating societies where they did look after each other. And if there are those who are a bit weaker, they're taken care of. That's what being human is all about. We're not lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Um... Another view would be socialism. Everyone who's working chips in and pays national insurance or whatever tax so that those who can't find work through no fault of their own are looked over. I, I know an awful lot of people actually are, are thoroughly opposed to socialism. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm a socialist. I'm a paid up member of the Labour Party. But that's not really what I'm here to talk about. Um... And my kind of thinking is, and this would absolutely be opposed by the corporations who've brought in the robots, if a company is using robots, and that's putting normal human beings out of work, who've got no chance of doing anything else, because all of that kind of work will be robotized, a robot tax, I think... Look after the people who no longer have any hope because they've been made 
obsolete human labor if it becomes ob- I mean they used to talk in the 50s and 60s and whatever about this brave new future filled with robots one day people won't have to work because robots will do it all for them and we'll live a life of leisure and it sounds great but what the hell do you live on um because you've got to have money to live and you make money by working but if you're not working because a robot's doing your job how are you going to live it's a flawed vision unless the people who bring in the robots to replace the humans look after the people they've replaced and that's kind of what i think and it's like yes they there is the argument they've invested their money to make that company successful so they should benefit from it yes no problem with that but if really all they're doing is sitting on their ass and raking in the money, <laughs> um, do they? Do, is it right? Is it right for them to push people into poverty just so they can get even richer because they don't have to pay the wages of people? Anyway, I think you get the picture. I think a a robot tax, bring in robots by all means, but you've got to look after the people who you've made obsolete, and I I kind of see that. There aren't too many options. Socialism, where everyone who's working pays. Corporations using robots pay to look after the people they've made obsolete. Or a whole bunch of people are going to live in poverty through no fault of their own because progress. Mm, I don't know. It's a tricky one. I'm, I'm not opposed to progress at all. I love technology. I think it's fascinating and brilliant and can do some amazing things and I want more of it I love gadgets I love seeing what can be done I hate the idea that it could destroy society that it could I mean things are pretty polarized at the moment the rich are getting richer the poor are getting poorer social divide blah 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 I uh, hate all that and I I, I see court if I corporations robotizing and making part of the population just plain obsolete it's quite scary, really, if you think about it. Hmm. Thoughts on that? Not my normal kind of video, but it's something I was thinking of, and I felt like talking about it. Um, maybe it should have gone on my Ben Ways World channel, but no one's going to see it there, so... No, here it is. Sorry if you were expecting something else. Anyway, that's all I've got to say on that, so uh, thank you for watching. Not without a knighthood. Not a chance. Anyway, Benway who? Oh. You lot. Uh. Hello. Uh. What? Oh. Please subscribe. Thank you. Can I go now? <laughs>